Now, in this video, we're going to talk about Lewis acids and Lewis base and the mechanisms that are involved in both reactants. So, first off, you'll be wondering what are Lewis acids? You can actually talk about this in terms of focusing on the electron right here. So, if you have the electrons in a specific compound, Usually, we're going to focus on lone pairs. We actually notice that a Lewis acid will actually have a characteristic behavior which is actually making it to be an electron pair acceptor. So, what that means is that this species is really electron deficient and it's willing to actually accept electrons in this case. However, for a Lewis base, we actually have the opposite of what Lewis acids does. That is why they are able to perform a form of a neutralization reaction. In this case, a Lewis base actually is known to be an electron pair donor. So that means due to how sufficient the electrons are in the Lewis base, it's able to actually donate the electrons to a Lewis acid so in this case we actually perform either the formation of a bond or the taking away of a particular substituent from a particular main group now we're going to focus on three examples in this lesson first off is that given the two reactants in each of the scenarios identify the Lewis acids and Lewis base. That is the first step. And the second step is to show the mechanism and products formed if possible. Now we have the first one which is aluminum chloride. We can actually do this by actually drawing the Lewis structure of aluminum chloride or better still just write the condensed structure which in this case is aluminum right there and we have three right there chlorides in there and what that means is that this aluminum chloride will some well fashion react with ammonia which has a nitrogen with three hydrogens attached so if we draw the Lewis structure you notice that aluminum actually is bonded to the chlorides one two three four five six electrons around and this part we have as well three four five six and finally here we have this chloride with one two three four five six electrons and once you're able to notice that we actually draw the Lewis structure of ammonia which in this case is one two and that is our lone pair and we have three hydrogens attached to nitrogen in there so as a result what we see is that by analysis we notice that the aluminum actually has a positive charge right there and it's surrounded by a partial negative charge around the chlorides so due to the partial positive charge on aluminum the negative electrons are attracted to the positive side of aluminum so as a result what we actually do is actually the flow of electrons going from nitrogen over to aluminum thereby we actually create a particular product which is shown as this rather than giving all the two electrons we actually form a bond between aluminum and nitrogen and we have the three hydrogens pointing and then we have our chlorides all attached to aluminum two three four five six and finally one two three four five six so we're able to create our product based on this and since the aluminum is going from a neutral to adding one more bond it means that it's going to have a negative charge however for nitrogen since nitrogen actually is going from 
three bonds with one lone pair to now four bonds with no lone pair nitrogen will have a formal charge that is positive so in this case defining aluminum chloride we notice that aluminum behaves like a lewis acid which accepts electron pair and what that results in is that it is a lewis acid because it is an electron pair acceptor while on the other side ammonia is known to be a lewis base because it is known to be here to be an electron pair donor so that is it for the first example right here and we're going to focus on another example which is bromine which exists in nature as this gas reacting with iron 3 bromide so in this case we're going to have 4 plus 2 that is 6 electrons and 6 electrons surrounding each bromine and then we have a bond between them and on the other side we have iron which is at the center and surrounding it is three bromides right there and once you're able to accomplish that you notice here that hey since we have three bromides surrounding the metal we believe that the metal will have the same idea that is actually coming from aluminum which is it will have a partial positive charge and this will have a partial negative charge and a partial negative charge partial negative charge and what we see is that these are bromide one of the atom here is going to have its lone pair donated to our particular metal center as a result we notice our bromine to be a lewis base because in this case it acts as an electron pair donor and on the other side our iron 3 bromide is a lewis acid and that means that it is an electron pair acceptor so our product in this case is going to be shown as follows we have bromide here with all electrons there and this one here has two electrons at the top and two at the bottom but then one of the lone pair becomes a bonding pair with our uh, iron and this iron is bonded to three bromine atom we actually look at the charge since the center bromine here which is bonded to the iron has two lone pairs and two bonding pairs it means that its charge will be positively charged however for iron since it has four bonds and it's gaining a bond that means that it has a charge that is negative and finally we have this question which is dimethyl ether bonding or reacting with boron trifluoride so from organic chemistry we notice this to be dimethyl ether to so actually have oxygen attached to two methyl groups and this oxygen has two lone pairs and it's going to be reacting with boron attached to three fluorines atoms so what we recognize is that the boron will also have a partial positive charge well here we have a partial negative charge and what happens is that oxygen which has electrons will be attracted to the positive and as a result since that is happening we recognize that our dimethyl ether will be considered to be a Lewis base which means it's an electron pair donor and this boron trifluoride will be a Lewis acid as a result because it is an electron pair acceptor our final product 
will be shown as follows we have oxygen with one methyl group and the second methyl group right there we have our lone pair right there and this is bonded with our boron and this boron is attached to our three fluorine atoms with our lone pairs attached to each fluorine atom so that is about it for this particular video hope you're able to understand identifying lewis base and lewis acids and how their electron pair donors and electron pair acceptors is applicable to mechanisms in this particular state all the same stay smart and believe in yourselves Thank you.